Hey y'all, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is going to be kind of a slow-paced, relaxing video with a yummy red velvet roll-out sugar cookie recipe. Now, if you want just a quick look at the recipe and you want to grab those ingredients and all the details, there is a blog post linked in the description below on saragracecookieco.com with the red velvet sugar cookie recipe all laid out for you and all the instructions. Um, but if you want to enjoy watching the video and kind of come with me and bake with me and see the whole process, then stay tuned. Um, I think that you will really enjoy this video. I love watching other people bake. It makes me happy. I think baking is just such a beautiful process, whether I'm the one doing the baking or someone else is. So I wanted to create a video kind of inspired by some of the bakers I enjoy watching. So I'm starting out with a couple sticks of softened butter. I ended up using salted butter because I didn't have unsalted on hand. Now a good baker would tell you to only use unsalted butter, but since I didn't have it on hand, I just used salted and left the salt out of the recipe. You want your butter to be nice and soft so that when you press your finger down, it will leave an indent. You don't want it to be hard enough that it's there's any resistance to your finger. You want it to be really soft. And I do this just by leaving these couple sticks of butter out on the counter for a couple hours. But if you forget to soften your butter, you can always pop it in the microwave for a moment. that my mixer is fitted with a paddle attachment. This one has a little silicone spatula built onto it and I found that on Amazon. It's really handy and helps scrape the sides of the bowl. I'm adding a cup of granulated white sugar and I'm going to cream those together until they're nice and light and fluffy. I find that a lot of times when people first start making cookies, they don't really know what the recipe means when it says cream together butter and sugar. I didn't for sure. I thought that it just meant let it go in the mixer for a minute until it was mixed together. But when a recipe says cream those together, it means let them go until they're really nice and fluffy and the butter has actually changed color to this light white creamy color. That's why it's called creaming them together. It creates air pockets in the butter. It makes for a really soft, delicious sugar cookie. And it just really changes the texture of anything you're baking when you allow it to take time to cream together. That usually takes at least probably five, six to eight minutes usually. I'm adding some Americolor Very Red food coloring. There are only a couple differences in this recipe and my regular vanilla recipe. It's the food coloring and a bit of cocoa, but it's amazing what a different taste they have and how much different it is just from those little tweaks. So I'm allowing that to cream together just until that's turned red and being sure to scrape down those sides. that it's all mixed in. This will actually become more intense as the recipe goes on. The color does not get lighter as you might think. It actually becomes more dark and more red as you go because that color does develop. I'm cracking two eggs into a separate bowl. I always like to use a separate bowl to crack my eggs into. That way I don't uh, end up with a bad egg. But I'm adding them one at a time to the mixer while it's on low, just until they're incorporated. And I find that sometimes you have to turn the mixer up to medium or high 
to get them all the way incorporated, you want to make sure that you have one fully mixed together mixture and that you can't see any little traces or spe specks of egg or slimy looking texture. It should be all worked together and completely homogenous. I'm adding my vanilla and y'all know that I measure vanilla with my heart, not with a measuring spoon, but if you need to measure, it's about two teaspoons. So now I'm going to sift together my dry ingredients. Normally if I wasn't filming I would do this while the butter and sugar is creaming together since I have quite a bit of time while I'm waiting on that to happen. That just seems to be really quick and efficient but I like to use one of those little handheld sifters. It makes it really handy. I can only fit three cups of flour in it at a time though. So I'm starting with three here and sifting that out and then I'm gonna add my remaining dry ingredients. So we're using four cups of all-purpose flour total. Then I'm adding two tablespoons of cocoa powder. This is what gives it that red velvet flavor. I read that in the 1800s that any cake that used cocoa powder was referred to as velvet because something about the flour, the way it was made back then, when you added cocoa, it made it a little bit silkier. So I thought that was interesting. I'm adding a third of a teaspoon, oh, excuse me, a third of a cup of cornstarch, and this just helps the cookies hold their shape, and I find it gives them a little bit of a softer bite. Now, if you had used unsalted butter, <laughs> then you would just add a quarter teaspoon of salt at this point as well. But I used salted, so I just didn't add any salt. I'm going to give those ingredients a quick whisk just to get them all incorporated together and then I'm going to add them in small increments to the bowl of my mixer as I mix on low. I like to let it incorporate and then add a little bit more because it just seems like it comes together a little bit more smoothly when you do it in little increments like that. And while we're adding these dry ingredients in, I thought I would just take a second to say welcome. If you are new to the channel, if we haven't met before, hi, I'm Sarah Grace. I teach royal icing sugar cookie decorating, and I also have some courses online about sugar cookie decorating, about royal icing, and having a cookie decorating business. I'm a small town mama of two. I found cookie decorating as a hobby and a passion that turned into a business that I really enjoyed running from home. And then I found that I enjoyed teaching others the skill and the craft as well. And that has just kind of grown and expanded into this YouTube channel. And now I make videos about baking and business and just all things cookies. <laughs> But I would love to know what kind of videos you'd like to see. I know I make some recipe videos, I make some decorating videos. Um, I'd love to know what kind of videos you would like to see in the future, what kind of things you are wanting to learn about, and I can use that to make some videos in the future. I'm 
dividing this dough in half because it just makes it easier to roll half at the time. This recipe actually makes about two dozen sugar cookies. If you're using, I usually use about a three to four inch cookie cutter, but with an average size cookie cutter, this should make about two dozen cookies, the entire recipe. And I like to divide it in half. That way I can roll out a rolled piece of dough that I can kind of think of as a dozen. I like to roll and freeze my dough. I have a video on how I do that and how I use a seal pat mat and parchment paper to make that a little easier. But today, just for the sake of the pretty baking and like the floured work surface, I just think that's beautiful, especially with that brightly colored dough. So I didn't use my seal pat mat today. But if you'd like to know how I do that and the whole process of how I freeze dough to make cutting sugar cookies easier, then you can watch that video and I'll link it in the description and in the cards up above. using a baking sheet lined with a copper baking mat. I found these at Walmart, but you can also use parchment paper. Um, either one will work. And I've got my oven preheating to 375 degrees while I cut out these cookies. Now you do not have to freeze your dough before baking your cookies. I find that it makes life a little easier when you're making a lot of cookies, especially like when I was making cookies for customers I would freeze it a lot more than I do now now sometimes I just bake with what I have rolled in front of me this recipe should give you nice no spread cookies that taste really good and look really pretty whether you freeze or not so you can roll these out and do a no chill method and they work just fine I like to brush a little bit of that flour off so that that pretty red color can really shine through also Bake these cookies at 375 for around six to eight minutes. I set my timer for seven minutes exactly. I have made these enough times that I know kind of how my oven works and you may want to set it for six the first time around and see how it does. You want to pull them out when the tops are no longer shiny. And these can be decorated with royal icing, buttercream, eaten as is, however you want to do it. If you'd like some tips on royal icing cookie decorating, then just look in the description below or in the suggested videos for some more videos from my channel. That is my thing. It's what I do. This is a little snippet from last week's video that I shared where I show you how to make some cute Valentine's cookies. If you're interested in learning royal icing cookie decorating and mastering those different techniques that come with cookie decorating, then definitely check out sarahgracecookiecoat.com. There's a blog, resources, tons of information there to help you get started and help you grow as a cookie decorator if that's what you're looking to do. You can also continue watching the videos on this channel. Check out my Instagram at sarahgracecookiecoat as well. There are lots of online classes on my site that you can buy to help you kind of get a jump start on learning to decorate. And one of them is the Royal Icing Florals Masterclass. You can get 25% off the Florals Masterclass online class now through February 28th using the code FLORAL25 when you check out. I'll put some more information in the description below so that you can check out that class, but it teaches you how to make those petals and how to create beautiful floral designs with royal icing. 
Thank you so much for watching today and I would appreciate it if you enjoyed this video, if you would subscribe and like and all that good stuff. <laughs> I will see y'all next week on Tuesday.